Hello everyone, this is Jeff Harvey from Down Under Beza and we are the registered migration agent practice here in Manila, Philippines who specialize in visas for Australian Filipino couples. That means we do tourist visas for couples, we do especially we do partner visas for couples and we do various family visas like child visas, citizenship applications for your Australian kids here in the Philippines. Now I'm just going to go over the points of the three available uh, options to bring your Filipino or Filipino partner to Australia whether you are married, engaged or in a de facto relationship. Um, there are only three options available. I'll just go over the important points about what they can and can't do. Please excuse my bird in the background who likes to join in. Okay. Um, First point, can apply with uh, the applicant here in the Philippines, okay. Subclass 309, offshore partner visa, yes you can. Subclass 820, onshore partner visa, no you can't. Subclass 300, which is a prospective marriage visa, yes you can. Okay, applicant must be inside Australia to apply, that's an offshore partner visa. Must be inside Australia, can't apply for it anywhere else. Needs a tourist visa to get into Australia first. Once again, that's your offshore partner visa. Others, it's not not necessary. Needs a travel ban exemption to get into Australia. Uh, important point in these days of COVID. A subclass 309 on offshore partner visa, not required. Don't need that. A subclass 820, yes you do. Um, not so much for the visa itself, but in order to get into Australia with uh, with a tourist visa, it is necessary to have an exemption to Australia's current travel bans um, and they are available to spouses and that means they are available to uh, to married couples and to those who are in a genuine long-term de facto relationship. Not available for fiancés, not available for girlfriends. Uh, subclass 300, uh, not applicable. Cannot get a travel ban exemption to enter Australia at the moment Subclass 300 prospective marriage visa, can't get one. There's political pressure to change that, but at the moment um, it isn't and uh, we cannot tell you when or if that will change. There must be married first to apply. Okay, that only applies to an onshore partner visa. Uh, you have to be married first in order to apply. Now, please note, um, that also includes in, a, in an established 12, 12 months plus de facto relationship. If you happen to be in a de facto relationship for 12 months plus, yes, you may you, you may apply for a subclass A20 based on that, but you cannot apply for it if you have neither that or you're not married. So it must be done. Uh, must be married for the visa to be granted. Uh, subclass 309. Sorry, I'll just go back a little bit here. Please note with a subclass 309 offshore partner visa, you do not need to be married first to apply but you do need to get you do need to marry before they will grant the visa so when you start it you get married uh, and then wait for it to be granted it must be married for it to be granted yes subclass 309 offshore partner visa you must be married before they grant it same with the subclass 820 onshore partner visa prospective marriage visa doesn't apply okay see so again or in the in established de facto relationship either of those two Two visas there, that does apply. Uh, cannot marry before entering Australia, important point. Prospective marriage visa. So uh, if you have had that granted, you cannot you cannot marry until the applicant or the visa holder at that point has entered Australia. If you marry beforehand, well then you breach visa conditions. So uh, yeah. Okay, applicant must have met in person um, be f met, met the sponsor in person before applying for the visa. Now, oddly enough, that does not apply with an offshore partner visa. There's nothing written in the regulations that says you must have met in person before you, you may apply. Subclass 820, yes, well, you, you definitely must have met in person. Prospective marriage visa, you must have met in person. No getting around those. Uh, this is one for for those who are bringing children, including children in the visa application. Important point. Um, 
if you have if, if your kids enter australia with a uh, subclass 820 um on sorry i should say they enter australia on on a tourist visa and apply for a subclass 820 onto your partner visa what happens tourist visa runs out uh bang you go onto a bridging visa while you are waiting for that visa to be granted now that might be 12 months or more processing during that time you have if you have kids included you have to pay some fairly hefty school fees for the kids to attend public schools difference between states please don't ask me to tell you how much something you have to you have to inquire at your state education department but it's fairly significant uh, with an with a an offshore partner visa doesn't apply there um, the kids are permanent residents when they arrive they can attend school freely just like any other Australian uh, same with the subclass 300 if if their kids included yeah they go to school not an issue complicated the process being being complicated look, a subclass 820 onshore partner visa look it is complicated I'm not saying don't do it I'm just saying be prepared for a bit more work involved means having to apply for a tourist visa means having to apply for a travel ban exemption as well as the visa itself and then you have a time limit in which to get everything done because you don't want to be there in Australia with a tourist visa running out and you're not ready to apply for that partner visa so yes it is more complicated if you're good with complicated things well by all means consider it if not you may want to think otherwise less complicated um, Subclass 309 uh, offshore partner visa is less complicated uh, and it's it's just the one visa, no tourist visas required, no travel ban exemptions. A uh, subclass 300 respective marriage visa is also uh, less less complicated. Um, of course there's no tourist visas involved and there are no uh, travel ban exemptions because unfortunately they're not granting those at the moment. If you are wanting help, if you're wanting further guidance with uh, a, a visa for your partner and you don't want to risk stuffing it up, especially in these more compli complicated times during COVID, during while well, the travel bans, when processing can be very, very long and complicated, uh, please, uh, if you look below, you will see a link to get a free visa assessment. It takes you five minutes to do it. You get detailed advice, um, no obligation. If you'd like us to help, we will happily do so. Uh, if not, well, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but we will be honest with you. If we cannot help you, we will tell you. We quite often tell people things they don't want to hear. Well, that's life. We have a conscience. We like to be able to sleep at night, and we have we have ethics that we stick to. So I hope we can help you. I hope that's proved to be useful. Uh, please look at getting that assessment. Um, if you need some help uh, please subscribe please click like down below uh, we appreciate that thanks very much